Thank you so much, John Short, for signaling the start of tonight's celebration with the shofar. Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? Hello, students. So nice to see all of you again. What a night we have tonight. What a celebration. Can you believe it? The 25th anniversary of Northwood. It's just been, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you look at the number of students sitting here in the front rows, it's hard to imagine that back in 1989, North Hook began with one small class of just eight students, if you can believe that. Tonight we are celebrating you, our students, the students who came before you, and your determination to make this such a great learning experience. You are some of the best students I've ever had the honor to meet. Hardworking, so, so serious, but fun. So it's such a pleasure to be among you again. We also want to celebrate your families, your caregivers, and those who've supported you through these classes. So let's hear it for all of them. Yeah. You know, this anniversary is a time to celebrate North Hook's generous donors. 25 years ago, when the original concept for a three-year pilot project was presented to Kate Walters, the Steelcase Foundation, she willingly responded with funding to get the program off the ground. So it's appropriate that Kate is our honorary chairperson for this 25th anniversary event. Kate could not be with us tonight, but we do want to thank her for the potential, seeing the potential of Northhook, and we extend a special welcome to everyone who has supported and sponsored Northhook over the past 25 years. To give you an idea of the importance of tonight's milestone celebration, we put together a video. It shows the impact of the program on students and families of GRCC and on our community. It was put together by Class Quant, who's the GRCC Video Content Production Manager. Grand Rapids is a community of many colleges, large and small, all together educating tens of thousands of students each year. And out of all of these students, one group stands out, demonstrating a passion for learning unlike anyone else. They want to learn. They're so motivated to learn. A walk in the classroom, or they'll walk in the classroom and they'll be so excited about what we're learning about. So you might wonder, are we talking about Grand Valley students or Calvin or Aquinas? Nope. We are talking about the Grand Rapids Community College students enrolled in the North Hook Academy, a truly unique college experience founded in 1989. North Hook Academy is a college experience program for adults with special needs. Students at North Hook Academy are students who have completed their high school education but really want to continue on with learning. So. We partner with Grand Rapids Community College and students have an opportunity to come and get an education in the arts and sciences. My family is all proud of me that I could further my mind, my brain, that I could be in a college setting and learning. Having graduated from high school, I could learn more about my own world. The community feels like um, this is something that they've um, been a part of creating because Grand Rapids, this was the first. And I think of all the other funders that have partnered at North Academy and it's just exciting to watch it grow and uh, watch the, the students grow along with it. Many might take the opportunity for going to college for granted. That never happens with a Northwood student. Every chance to learn is cherished and taken advantage of, even, believe it or not, something most of us dread. I love doing homework. I love it. Kind of have to do it homework. Get, you get credit for it, for a college student. I love it. I always do my homework last minute. Last minute before I go to class. Yeah. We did say in our classroom and we learn about Israel or Mexico or some country. Or sometimes we go to computer lab 
It has been life-changing. Absolutely the highlight of Kylie's week is coming to North Hook. All of Kylie's cousins and aunts and uncles went to college right after high school. And so very much that was the path that Kylie wanted to pursue. She is very much ingrained and entrenched in the college life. Students do feel like they're in college. They, they get to be a part of the campus community and um, they do get nationally recognized continuing education units for each semester that they take. So students do get to be a part of the campus community and it's, it's quite meaningful for them. You know, as I think about our institution and our open door philosophy and working with all people to extend their educational opportunities, being able to partner with Northrop is just a perfect fit for us. I can't tell you how much pleasure I received as we awarded to one of our Northrop Academy students the honorary associate degree last year. The beam on that young woman's face lit up my heart and I'm sure we all feel that way as we work with students as they come to our academy. This is vital. I really believe that all individuals deserve to be challenged and educated and it doesn't end just at high school. And so as much as we as a community can do to support the North Hook Institute, the better it is. Yes, there may be tens of thousands of college students in Grand Rapids, but only a few of them really stand out. Only a handful can proudly claim to be Northbrook Academy students. It's amazing. I am college student, and my favorite is Northbrook Academy. So I want to say congratulations to Northwick Academy, to the leadership there, and congratulations most of all to the students. Um, they have really um, reached some great milestones in 25 years um, through all of the ups and downs and all of the growing pains that they've had. And 25 years, my gosh, is such an accomplishment. And I'm so proud of you. Uh, the people at the Weggie Foundation are proud of you. Mr. Weggie would be thrilled to be able to be here himself and congratulations to everyone involved. Yes, congratulations. You should all be very proud. I know many of you students from Special Olympics Michigan because a lot of you I know compete and are athletes. And so the thing that I, that I often think about is the only disability is the inability to have an open mind and an open heart. And all of you have all of that. Everyone in this room has that. So everyone, this is such a great evening. We are so honored to have with us tonight Dr. Stephen Endert, who's the president of Grand Rapids Community College. Dr. Ender wanted to be a part of this anniversary celebration. We saw in the video his personal enthusiasm for Northhook. It is awesome. We also know that Dr. Ender's strong support of the partnership has strengthened this program. And that signals that great things are ahead for Northhook. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Ender. You know, I, I got choked up on stage last year and I got choked up back there as we watched that again. I think that was one of the more beautiful experiences of my life. On behalf of Grand Rapids Community College and our Board of Trustees, I welcome you to this celebration of 25 years of empowerment and achievement at Northrop Academy. The Northrop program has blossomed from its initial pilot of eight students in 1989 to the current 65 students and four classes a week. During this quarter century, the program has been recognized by the Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. Foundation the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, the Grand Rapids Direction Center, the State Office of Special Education, and in numerous articles and publications. Northrop was the first program of this kind in the United States and continues today to shine as a national model. Many people have guided and shaped Northrop over its 25 years. And I'd like to take a few moments to recognize, uh, recognize a few of these visionaries. In the late 80s, there was an idea 
to provide a post-secondary college experience in the arts and sciences for young people with special needs. But where could this program be located? How could it be partnered with the campus so as to create a meaningful college experience for the participants? Greg Osmond, Grand Rapids Public Schools Assistant Superintendent for Special Education, decided to approach Dick Calkins, president of what was then Grand Rapids Junior College. He found President Calkins to be very receptive to the idea, and I am exceptionally proud to represent GRCC as your partner tonight. Greg has been a longtime Northrop trustee, and I know all of us would like to thank him for his advocacy and dedication. Greg, where are you? I know you're here because I saw you earlier. <laughs> Taking the helm of the brand new academy was Kathleen Russell. What did she have to work with in 1989? Eight students and an idea for an arts and sciences program. But that was enough for Kathleen. She shaped an exciting and meaningful curriculum that helped those students and many who came after the initial eight realizing, realize their special talents and abilities. Thank you for your contributions, Kathleen. They've been outstanding. And where are you? I know you're here, right here. <laughs> From the first director, we go to Sandy Barraza. Sitting right over here. <laughs> Sandy is our current director. She's done a wonderful job expanding the program to reach a growing number of students. She's, she has met the challenges of our growing enrollment with dedication and excitement. And we'd like to take a moment to thank her for her efforts. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> Another longtime supporter is Cy Moore, who has served as the Academy's president for many years. A community leader and a highly respected businessman, Cy has guided the program to a sound financial status, spearheading a successful endowment campaign. Cy will sh share more about that endeavor a bit later in the program, but I know we all want to share our thanks with him now. Thank you for your hard work, Cy, and you are here. Where are you? Last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank the many, many people, a great number of you are in this room tonight, who have donated to and supported Northrop Academy through the years. Not only have you built the program, but you've fostered creativity, achievement, and pride in countless young people. As a proud partner with Northrop, we at GRCC congratulate the students, parents, and supporters of this program over the past quarter of a century. Together we have opened the door, and we can't wait to see what comes through it in the next 25 years. Thank you. Sandy? <laughs> and more. <laughs> I'll give you more. All right. This is when I get to share with you about our fabulous year that we had. And it was a fabulous year. Um, our 25th anniversary year was very, very special indeed. We had eight new students join us this year, which is always a joy for me because it opens new doors. Tonight we're talking about opening doors, but um, when new students join us, it opens new doors and new opportunities for our program and students because new students bring fresh ideas and a fresh perspective and that's really exciting. So um, in order to talk about the fall semester, I have to go back a little ways. I have to go back to the winter semester of 2013 because that is the semester that we decided to do a unit on communication. We learned about how communication and communication technology has evolved as part of this unit, we visited the Grand Rapids Community Media Center as a field trip, and we were able to see how a working television station was conducted. And that was really exciting. It was fun to see 
the students' eyes kind of light up and ideas started to come into their head and they got very, very excited about um, the possibility of working at a TV studio. So, over the summer, we developed a relationship with the Community Media Center where students could learn in much more depth about TV production. So our fall semester took place at the Community Media Center, which was a change for us. Um, we went to the Community Media Center on Wealthy Street, and students learned about the various jobs that people hold um, who do television production. Students got to actually do these jobs, and each class was able to produce four shows on different topics that were interesting to them. As a class, students worked together to do show prep. They invited talent and guests. Sometimes they were the talent and the guests. Um, they learned to run cameras and do sound, uh, work in the sound room. Some of the topics, well, each of the classes dedicated a whole week or one show to Northwick Academy and how awesome it is, which was very, very cool. Um, other show ideas and issues were disability awareness, love and relationships. We had a class do one on health, um, and we had a class, maybe two, um, really just show us their talents. We had dancers and singers, and we had a comedian, all sorts of things, it was fun. Um, it was really our hope that the community would see these productions and get a glimpse into the rich and fulfilling lives that Northwick students lead. This most recent semester, we had the privilege of learning about the country of Israel. I always, when deciding on topics, I always try and um, teach content that is relative to our world and the lives of our students. So Israel, of course, is an area of the world that has tremendous historical, political, and religious significance. So we took that on, and we had fun learning about the history of Israel. We went all the way back to the time of Abraham, and this was, well, I thought this was interesting. I think students did too, because they were able to sort of tie together some stories that maybe they heard in church and learn about how they tie into the development of a new country, um, the country of Israel. Well, it's maybe not so new anymore, but relatively new. Um, I lost my place. We spent a great deal of time talking about Jewish religion and customs. Um, we also talked about other religions that can be found in Israel. Um, we talked about the Muslim faith, and we saw video and pictures of many of the different significant religious sites in Israel. Food is always a favorite when we study a region or a country. And that was no exception this time. Students got to enjoy some traditional Israeli food. Um, they had hummus, they had an Israeli salad, they had the Sabbath stew that I unfortunately cannot pronounce. I can spell it for you, but I can't pronounce it. Um, they had jelly donuts too, and I know that sounds like we just wanted a yummy dessert, but there's actually some significance to the jelly donut. So if you're interested in that, maybe find a student afterwards and ask them, and hopefully you all remember. If not, check with me. Um, <laughs> a special thank you for, to David Wolven. David Wolven brought in some donuts on his day of, of class, and also Jenny Short um, was generous enough to bring in um, a noodle dish, um, which a noodle kugel, yes, it was wonderful. So learning about Israel would not be complete without learning about the holidays, the celebrations, and traditional arts and music. So the wonderful music of the klezmer musicians who have joined us tonight is an example of the cultural enrichment that we try to introduce our students to. We learned that klezmer is the traditional music of the Eastern European Jewish people. It is performed at major life events such as bar mitzvahs, weddings, and this is a new one, but tonight we get to have them for our 25th an anniversary celebration. Yay. <laughs> So I would like to introduce our musical group tonight. This is Hutzpah, and Hutzpah has been delighting you, will continue to delight you with jazz standards from Jewish composers. They, um, individually, they are Michelle Benjamin, who is the clarinet and the band leader. 
We have Larry Broomberg on keyboard. Evans DeVries on percussion. And Ken Nelson on bass. Thank you so much, Hetzba, for joining us tonight. And now I feel kind of like a rock star because I got to like introduce the band, which was fun. <laughs> um, I would like to give a special thank you to Kate Powers, the assistant teacher. Um, because of her past experience teaching at one of the local Jewish schools, Chabad House was very, very helpful with enriching the content of this semester. I also very greatly appreciated uh, the willingness of a few of our Jewish students who are so helpful um, and willing to share their own experiences, so thank you very much for doing that. It was a wonderful year as always, and I am incredibly proud of each and every one of you. Well, thank you. <laughs> And now, as an outstanding highlight of our 25th anniversary year, what could be better um, than to have the Honorable Sarah Smolensky as our speaker tonight? We have tried for many years to get her, but she has a very busy schedule and has been very booked. Um, she's a very popular speaker in the community, very well respected for her important work as Chief Judge of the 63rd District Court and for her strong leadership and support of so many nonprofit groups and organizations. Um, really part of the thrust of our program is to introduce students to key figures in the community. We are incredibly honored to present one of Grand Rapids' brightest and most admired stars, Judge Sarah Smolensky. me almost wipe out? Yeah. <laughs> My middle name is Grace. It's not really, but I'll work on that. What a thrill it is for me to be here. It is really an honor for me, and I am so proud. I joined President Ender when he echoed, it was a bit emotional, watching your video. And I know Klaus that did the video with you, and it is a beautiful video. So we are so proud of each and every one of you, and it really is an honor for me. And as I sat there and I heard Ms. Barraza talk about the different things you learned, it went off like a light bulb. We got to have a class where you all come out to court. <laughs> really. Not to stay, just to visit. Yeah? You would like it, and you would learn, and it would be a good experience, and I would love to be there. So you can have an open invitation, Sandy. We can work it out. We have all groups of students come to our court, from second grade, are the youngest, to Heather Hills, are the oldest. <laughs> you know, Heather Hills is like a retirement place, like Clark and Port Porter Hills. You know Katie, Porter Hills. Katie and her mom, Elizabeth, and your dad, but mostly your mom and you, have been my, and Fred, have been my connection to North Hook Academy for really a number of years. And I, my mom and dad lived at Porter Hills when Katie was there doing an internship when you were helping serve in the, in, in the main dining room. Thank you. I was gonna call it the cafeteria and I would be wrong. It was the main dining room and Katie got to serve and I got to be friends with Katie back then. I would just like to say uh, real quickly that Katie's mom, Elizabeth, I know she's here somewhere, I saw her earlier, she is a saint. That's how I feel about you, Elizabeth. <laughs> she's a saint, you know. I, I 
she has called me a number of years, and I am so sorry it's taken as long as it has to get the dates to fit. And even this date, she called me so far in advance, I was just hoping I would still be living. <laughs> On April 25, you know, April 24, 2014. Okay, this is what I want to say to the students. I was thinking about what I would say when I would come here tonight, and I wanted to share with you, because this is what you give me. You give me inspiration, each one of you. And, you know, I was elected as a judge 24 years ago. And I can remember there were five of us in the race. You know, you go to the election and you vote on people. Well, a lot of people don't know who the judges are. So back then, we're talking 24 years ago, they didn't have email and the internet and cell phones that you could call and send texts to everybody and you had to go knock on doors. So I would go knock on people's doors to ask them if they would vote for me. And the inspiration that I get from you is something that I've carried for a long time and that is you believe in yourself. That's why you're here and that's why you're doing as well as you do. And that's why, like Melinda, Grand Rapids Community College said, we're giving you the honorary degree last year. Because they see in you that you believe in yourself. Your parents, your families, your loved ones, your teachers, everybody at North Hook Academy believes in you. But it starts with you believing in you. And you can do anything. And North Hook is making that possible because you've made the commitment. Now, when I ran for judge, I was the youngest one and the only female. Five in the race. And everybody's out there trying to get the votes. And I'd walk door to door, door to door, door to door. And one time I came to a guy's house in Byron Center. It's nothing against Byron Center exactly. Because there's guys that live like this in all of our community. But this just happened to be a guy in Byron Center, and when I knocked on the door, you have like two minutes. Two minutes to tell them about yourself. Because they're busy, they got stuff going on. And I said, my name's Sarah Smolensky, and I'm running for judge. And I would really appreciate it if you would consider voting for me. And you try to let them know in two minutes that you could do it. But you got to believe in yourself. Because if you didn't believe in yourself, it's hard to knock on the guy's door. Well, then can you imagine when he said to me, I don't think women should be judges. <laughs> now, this is a good example for all of us where you can't always say the first thing you think. You can't always say what's really in your mind because it might not be the right thing to say, even though it might be <laughs> true. <laughs> so I didn't want to say what I was really thinking. Instead, I said, you know, sir, I can respect that you think only men should be judges. But when you think about the population, there's really more women in the world than men. And a judge deals with all the people. Every race, all the gender, genders, um, you know, we work with all kinds of people. So you'd want your bench, that's the judges, you'd want them to have diversity. You'd want them to bring different viewpoints and, and, and be able to relate to all people. I knew he was never going to vote for me no matter what I said. So I didn't give him one of my brochures that cost me 68 cents to print. Because I knew he'd just throw that right in the trash. Instead, I said, thanks very much. I appreciate that that's your opinion. I think you're wrong. And I think women would be good judges. And I walked across his front lawn, <laughs> kind of digging in my heels. And I said a little prayer. And I said, dear Lord, Please let me win this election. And if I do, let that guy get caught speeding in East Grand Rapids. <laughs> 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 
while it is a little bit funny, it does show you that you must believe in yourself. And you know what? Your families are so wonderful because they have supported you from day one. And they have believed in you. And it's people like Katie's mom, Elizabeth, who started North Hook Academy that gives you the opportunity to do what you did so that we can see a video of what you do in college and we feel so proud. Now I'll tell you, I love it that your partner is Grand Rapids Community College for a couple of reasons. Number one, I would not be at all if it wasn't for Grand Rapids Junior College because my mother met my dad at Grand Rapids Junior College. So I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Grand Rapids Junior College. And secondly, that was 1936 my parents met here. And secondly, I went to school here. I got my degree, Melinda, just like you got your degree, Associate of Arts right here at Grand Rapids, then Junior College, now Community College. So as a Raider, like your Raiders, I am proud that Grand Rapids Community College is connected to North Hook Academy. Now after I got done at Grand Rapids Junior College, I went to Michigan. You've heard of Michigan. Go blue, Go blue you got it girl. Go blue. Go blue. We'll let those Spartans cheer too because they had a great year this year. But I'll tell you what, which is kind of funny because when my mom and dad got done with junior college, my dad went to Michigan, my mom went to Michigan State. So we had it all at our house. But I went to Michigan. And when I was a junior at the University of Michigan, this is where I discovered what I call my 3D approach to life. And it has to do with how I developed believing in myself. So that in every aspect of my life, I've never been the top of my class. I've had challenges. I was never the top. But you know what? You don't have to be the top to be a contributor. Everybody is a contributor. Everybody has gifts. And then you find out what your gifts are, as we saw on the video, liking to do homework at the last minute, right? <laughs> That's like every college student I know, right? So I'm at the University of Michigan, coming off a great career playing women's basketball here at junior college. Two years. Got to go all over. We flew to Texas with the Raider women's team here. I get to the University of Michigan, and I wasn't the top player anymore. I wasn't one of the best. I didn't play every single game like I did at junior college, but I didn't want to give up in believing in myself because I knew I could contribute. So we were going to have our first game. This is way before scholarships. I'm that old. No scholarships. You had to try out for the team. You had to try out. Now they give people scholarships, pay for their whole college. When we were going to have our first game, we played at Chrysler Arena. It's a big facility in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where all the sports are played for the men and women's basketball and some other sports. And it was our first game. I made the team, and I was all excited. But I wasn't starting. And this 3D approach I had was this. First, you've got to have the desire. Want it. Whatever it is. You've got to go for it. You've got to want it. You really have to want it. Second, determination. We've heard that before. You guys are plenty determined. That's the commitment that you make deep down inside, which is what helps you believe in yourself. The third D is drive. I don't know about you guys. Like everybody else, we run out of steam. Sometimes we have a lot of desire to get something done, a project, something going on at home, at school, at church, at family. We've got the de desire. We want to. We are determined, but we run out of gas. Sometimes we just are exhausted. 
Can't get to it or only go halfway. We don't finish it. Well, at Michigan, I really, really had a lot of desire. I had a lot of determination and I had a lot of drive. And I developed it here at Grand Rapids Community College. So on our first game, most of my family was coming to the game. I'm one of 10 kids. That's a lot of family. <laughs> Chrysler Arena in the mid-1970s, well, it holds 11,000 people for screaming Wolverine fans. For the women's game, it held 50 <laughs> people. And about 28 were named Smolensky. <laughs> right here in Grand Rapids. So that first game started and my family drove over to Ann Arbor and we're all excited and I'm doing layups in the warm-up and the game starts, I'm not playing. But that's okay because I'm a team player and I cheer on my teammates and I had a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy, a lot of desire, drive and determination and I was cheering on my teammates from the bench because everybody can be a contributor. Well, the coach yells the first substitute in the game, and it was Sheila sitting next to me, one of my teammates. We had the maize and blue jackets and sweatpants, and the sweatpants zippered at the ankle. And we had leather Converse high-top tennis shoes, and they were cool, and we got them free. <laughs> we each got one pair of brand-new tennis shoes. It felt like Christmas. The men's team got eight pairs free. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> Sheila was trying to take her sweatpants off without unzipping the ankles of her sweatpants. Now picture this. She's pulling these long sweatpants over her high top tennis shoes and they are getting stuck. I mean stuck. I mean really stuck like a second grader with snow pants on trying to get his snow pants off over the boots. Not going to work. Picture Sheila on the ground, pulling, 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 twisting like a pretzel. She's on the ground. When a coach calls a player into the game, they just expect you check in, and in a second, you're in the game playing. Sheila is still on the ground. She's still struggling with her sweatpants because she never unzipped the ankles. All I remember... Hearing is the coach saying, Smolensky. And that desire, that determination, that drive. It was like my hair was standing on end. I was so excited. I heard my name and all I could think of is, I've got to get my pants off before Sheila does. Or I'm not getting in that game. So without a moment's hesitation, I stood up and I took a hold of my hips and I yanked my sweatpants down so fast, I took my shorts right with them. <laughs> and this is my debut at the University of Michigan. And I'm standing there in my underpants. And it took me a minute to realize I didn't have my shorts on. They were at my ankles. And then I heard the Smolensky section laughing. And, say, eh. and then I felt the cool breeze. I quickly pulled my shorts up and I got in that game. I had a lot of desire, a lot of drive, and a lot of determination. I think I scored about 18 points. Now that I think about it, it was more like two. But I feel like I, I felt like I scored 18. And I say no matter what it is that you go after, no matter what the project, what the goal is that you set for yourself, while it's so important to believe in yourself and to have that desire, that determination and drive, you got to keep your pants on. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, now I want to tell you a funny story that happened to me in court. And I was trying to think of when could I tell this story to this group and how am I going to work this story in? And really, I just thought, 
It's such a funny story, I don't really need to work it in. I'll just let you enjoy it. Because as students, we all have things that happen to us that are a little bit embarrassing. Sometimes we have things that happen that are embarrassing and we don't want to talk about them for about 10 years. Then we start talking about them, maybe. Well, I have a yellow Labrador. Years ago, I had a yellow Labrador named Babe. She was named after Babe Zaharias. She was a famous Olympic athlete. I had my dog, Babe, for 13 years, and then she got a little bit older. I told this at Clark home one time, and I was describing how she was having trouble walking, and she was getting older, and we had to put her down, and I saw the walkers and the wheelchairs, and I started thinking maybe that wasn't a great story for Clark home. But they loved it, and they were laughing, so it went with it. So my dog, Babe, she went to doggy daycare every day. She had doggy daycare and loved her caretakers. It was kind of like joint custody with, with, with our friend Pat Burpee that took care of her. Well, one day Pat was going to be on vacation with her husband and they weren't home for the week and my dog Babe looked at me that morning when I was getting ready for work. It was almost if the animals talked to you. It's almost as if they can let you know what they're thinking even though they don't speak. And she looked at me with those eyes and she said, Sarah, could I go to court with you today? And I thought to myself, I'd never brought my dog to court before. But I thought, who am I going to ask? Because I'm the chief judge. <laughs> now, my dog, Babe, was very, very well behaved. Very well behaved dog. Better than most of the people I deal with on a regular basis, to be honest with you. So I said yes, and she was quite excited. She jumped in the car, we drove to court, and it was a day that we had a whole day drunk driving trial in the courtroom with a jury. This is a true story, I'm not making it up. And I had my dog, Babe, sitting right at my feet in the courtroom. The people in the courtroom didn't even know she was there because when you're the judge, you're sitting up on a big bench and they can't see what's going on down there. So she's on the floor, perfectly calm, totally relaxed, sat through the whole trial in the morning. We went to lunch, broke for lunch, came back, getting ready to st start the second half of the jury trial. One of my staffers came to me and said, there's a guy here who's an attorney from White Cloud, Michigan. He has his client. They got mixed up on the date. They'd like to put a plea on the record. Could they get real quick into court before you start the second half of the trial? I don't like to make a jury wait, but I knew this guy had traveled with his client, and so I said yes. So the attorney and his client came into court. I was sitting on the bench. My dog was at my feet like usual. And I'm talking to this man who's pleading guilty and the attorney, and I'm explaining all the rights to him. And I'm talking to him about all the rights, making sure he understands everything when he's pleading guilty. And all of a sudden, my dog, babe, let one of those gassers that was so bad. I mean, really bad. Like, really, only a dog can do. And I felt my face starting to twist. And my eyes were watering. I think I had some tears coming down my cheeks. And I'm saying to the man, as I'm waving my hand in front of my face, kind of involuntarily, I say, do you understand these rights as I'm going over them with you? And he's, he's listening and, and trying to respond. And then I see the attorney pick up this file. <laughs> and and he's, like, he's like fanning the air. And I'm thinking, my goodness gracious, it's hit them. Now, it's an embarrassing moment when you're not quite sure what to do because I really did not want to tell them my dog was at my feet. But I really didn't like the alternative if I didn't tell them, because they were going to think it was me. So I had a few seconds to think about it, and I decided, on behalf of all the dogs and the dog lovers out there, I never told that attorney and his client that my dog was at my feet. Never told them. And that attorney left the courtroom after the proceedings, and he said, next time we're coming before lunch. I want to say that we are, as I started this, so proud of all of you students. 
We are so proud of the work that you do day in and day out. We're proud of everybody at North Hook Academy that has given you opportunities to really shine and to believe in yourself. So remember that the invitation stands wide open for you to come to court when we set that up. Sandy, thank you very much for letting me be here today. special guest for just one quick second. Okay, we need to come on up. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hang on, Kurt's in his hand here. Okay, good. I like, oh, sorry. I like to thank for all Northern students to honor as by her gift. She has a real personality and my longtime friend, Sarah. That's nice, thank you. Thank you, that's good. And next we have Cy Moore. There he is. We can give him applause. Perfect. Well, thank you, Judge Smolinski. I don't know how I follow that, but uh, <laughs> maybe with an accounting joke or two might put everybody to sleep. The, pro, the uh, video was, was really something and brought a tear to my eye as well. Uh, but uh, Judge Smolinski and I have something in common that she doesn't even know about, I bet. When my wife asked me who our speaker was, I told her it was Judge Smolinski, and she said, oh, she used to be our neighbor. And I said, really? She said, yeah, she used to babysit for my son in Ottawa Hills. Uh, He's, he's only 20, I think. <laughs> so we do have that, that in common. Uh, but bear with me what, so I can reminisce a little bit here uh, in regards to the 25 years of, of North Hook. Uh, and permit me to read some excerpts from a couple of minutes here. Uh, the first one is from September 23rd, 1987, which was before North Hook was really formed. And uh, it was the members of the committee of SNAP, S-N-A-P, met for the first time at Kent Occupational High School to discuss how continuing education classes for special needs students might be established. Present were Martha Zab, teacher at KOHS, Terry Borman, teacher at Shawnee Park Hearing Impaired Program, and Elizabeth Crouch, parent of a KOHS student. And this is what they decided at that meeting. <clears throat> Students currently labeled as LD, EMI, have an expressed desire to go to college. They want to learn more about a particular subject of interest. At present, in the Grand Rapids area, there are no classes developed to meet these needs. At this time, if a special education student asks, can I go to college, the answer is no. Uh, the message to such a student is either that continuing education is not important or that he or she is not eligible to continue their education. Either message was unacceptable and runs contrary to the principle of not imposing limitations on special needs students. There were a couple of meetings of SNAP as I read the, the minutes and I think Sheila Frank, I saw your name at uh, one of those meetings and so I'm sure you remember that as well. So there were a few meetings going uh, back uh, to 87 and, and 88 until Northwick Academy was officially formed and incorporated on March 2nd, 1989. And it received its tax exempt uh, 501c3 designation on April 19th, 1989. Uh, the first meeting scheduled of the Board of Directors of Northwick was held on March 14th, 1989. And just uh, permit me to read a few excerpts from those minutes. Uh, it was held at, uh, at 11.30 a.m. at Sully's Restaurant in the Days Inn. I don't know if anybody remembers that or not. But present were Elizabeth Crouch, President, and Greg Osmond, Vice President, Phil Jacobus, Treasurer, Joe Northhook, Tom Shear, and Reverend Charles Jones. 
Crouch reported that a checking account had been set up in the name of Northrop Academy with Old Kent Bank. And there was currently a balance of $276. Quite a distance of, from where we are today. Uh, Osman reported on the status of our partnership arrangement with Grand Rapids Junior College, citing many areas of cooperation and benefit to students such as ID cards, access to JC events, uh, use of commons and parking, and the awarding of community credits uh, for coursework. There was one name that was on both of those uh, minutes, uh, who was the first president of Northrop Academy, who's still uh, a director today, our chair of fundraising, and my estimate is raised in excess of a million and a half dollars for Northrop Academy. She doesn't like recognition. Uh, she's the founder of Northrop Academy, and that's Elizabeth Crouch. Elizabeth, stand here. I'm sure she's given at least a million and a half dollars worth of effort and time, if not more than that, to Northrop Academy over the last 25 years. Uh, there's another individual, Greg Osmond, who was mentioned uh, earlier, was one of, a, one of the first directors and has continued to contribute greatly to the success of uh, Northrop Academy. And Greg, would you stand and we'll give you another ovation. Now somewhere I heard it takes a village. I don't know where I heard that, but it has taken a village to uh, contribute to the success of Northrop Academy over the last 25 years. And I'd like to you know, mention every name there is, but I'm sure I would miss somebody. Uh, so I would like to ask who's ever been on a board, of, uh, been on the board of Northrop Academy or one of the committees over the 25 years, uh, if you would please stand and we'll recognize all of you. As you can see, it does take a village. Uh, my first contact uh, with, uh, from Northhook was with Elizabeth Crouch, called me and asked me if I'd be interested in helping with the accounting. And that was uh, in, in the middle of 1989. And then before I knew it, I was elected to the board in September of 1989. Uh, so I can't really celebrate my 25 years till later this year, but uh, we'll certainly have fun celebrating tonight. I'd like to thank uh, Grand Rapids Community College, uh, then known as Grand Rapids Junior College, for its partnership with North Oak Academy and for pri providing the experience, college experience to our students. The in-kind contribution of classroom space and services and supporting activities has made the program a success. Uh, in reviewing the minutes from 1989, Grand Rapids Junior College Foundation at that time offered the first scholarship to a North Hook student. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Enders for his continuing support and uh, also thank John Cowles and uh, Don Van Overen for serving on our current board of directors. We wouldn't exist without our donors, especially the ones in the early years that that believed in what uh, Elizabeth was trying to do. Uh, donors in our early years, as mentioned before, were Steelcase and Kate Pugh Walters. Uh, she led the way for uh, fundraising. Grand Rapids Community Foundation was one of our early donors. Kellogg Foundation, Smith Industries, Amway, the Fry Foundation, and a company that no longer exists, Mr. Favels, was one of our first contributors. We also have many other distinguished donors that have stayed with us over the years, uh, including the Waggy Foundation, the Peter C. and Emma Jean Cook Foundation, and the Sebastian Foundation. North Hook Academy relies on contributions from the community because we receive no public funding. Our donors have allowed us to keep the tuition for our students at the same amount for 25 years. That's $200 a semester. <laughs> <clears throat> a 
and the funds have also provided many scholarships for our students who can't afford to pay the tuition. Not all of our donors or representatives could be here tonight, uh, but I would like to uh, extend a special welcome to Martha Muir uh, of the Westerman Foundation. Martha is with us tonight for the first time, along with her son Cameron. Her interest in Northhook Academy began eight years ago and involves her grandson Andrew, who is currently in elementary school and the family hopes that one day he would, will come to Northhook Academy. Thank you, Martha, for your wonderful uh, interest in Northhook's future and thank you for directing the support of the Westerman Foundation our way. <clears throat> uh, the program you picked up tonight has the names of all of our donors over the past 25 years, and we thank each of you for believing in the potential of our students, for wanting to see these young men and women have the same opportunity others have, and for recognizing the benefit of our program to the community. I have some exciting news to tell you tonight. If you looked at the program, you'll see that our endowment under the umbrella of the Grand Rapids Community Foundation recently achieved the goal, our first phase goal of $500,000. That's a program that we started a few years ago. And uh, I'd like to thank all those who have contributed to the endowment with special thanks going to the Peter and Pat Cook Foundation and the Weggie Foundation for their seminal gifts and for their contingency pledges that completed our first phase. Uh, we're going to continue to build the endowment fund to assure that Northwood Academy has a uh, will be here well into the future. You can find more information on ways to give the endowment at the table in the back. We've got some endowment uh, brochures there. Uh, I'd also like to thank all those who have given to Northhook Academy through the uh, heart of West Michigan United Way. If you give to the United Way, you can designate your contribution of $50 or more for Northhook Academy. This year, one of our students, Fred Beam, where are you, Fred? is giving $600 out of his paycheck to Northup through the United Way. <laughs> That's in addition to his paying the tuition as well, so he's made a real contribution. It just goes to show how important Northup is to our students. Thank you, Fred. And then we have the Big Step Walk, which is going to be next uh, on the agenda here. But I'd just like to thank uh, our donors for this year's uh, uh, Big Step Walk. Uh, the Weggy Foundation, the Peter C. and Emma Jean Cook Foundation, Founders Bank and Trust, uh, with a special uh, mention of, of Lori Beard, President and CEO, who has uh, supported our Founders Partnership with Northwood Academy and the Big Step Walk, and the Peter Secchia family. I don't think Peter and Joan are here tonight. I didn't see them unless they came in at the last minute. But I'd like to express our thanks to uh, Ambassador Secchia and his wife Joan and their family uh, for all they do to support programs uh, for people with special needs in our community. We are honored to have uh, the association with Northhook and are grateful for all their generosity in the community. Together, the sponsor gifts plus one anonymous gift total $20,000 for this year's walk. Last year, our students and others who have uh, received pledges for the walk brought in another $13,000 for a total of $33,000, but the walk committee assures me that this year we're going to top that number. <clears throat> uh, the small army of volunteers who organized the Big Step Walk every year are listed in your program under the Friends of Northwood Academy Committee. Let's give a big round of applause to that committee. <laughs> now, Julia is going to tell us more about the Big Step Walk. And I just want to say thank you, Julia, for honoring us again this year and for adding so much enthusiasm and sparkle to our celebration. You're thank wonderful. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and what a generous man Sai is, too. So Judge Sarah, I have to tell you, last year I had the honor of speaking at the celebration. Thank you, Glenn. It was his idea. 
And the students at the end came up and told me that you were going to be the speaker this year. They were so excited, right, students? So please let Judge Sarah know how much you enjoyed her because I know you were so excited. <laughs> so maybe, students, you can help me again talk a little bit about this other big celebration that's coming up here. What is it called? Big Step Walk. The Big Step Walk. It's a community-wide event. It's an annual fundraiser. It's on the Aquinas College campus. And they're already out getting pledges, aren't you, students? Oh, yeah. And this is kind of weird, but I see like a couple of ladies already walking. And um, ladies, the walk isn't until May 10th. Oh, you know what? They can't wait. So let's get them up on stage with me. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Carbines and Maddie Hampton. And they are two outstanding members of the North Hook Committee that puts on the walk. Look at their t-shirts. Take a look at those shirts. <laughs> Can you feel the joy? All right, Dawn, tell us about the joy. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited. Do you remember me from last year? I won't make you yes. jump up and down. But we do absolutely want you to know. What does it say on the back of my shirt? Down from the clouds. Down, down from the clouds. What does that mean? 25 years. 25 years, yes. What it absolutely means is that um, the Big Step Walk is by far the most amazing fundraising day where we get to be together and we get to bounce in the clouds, right? Some of us walk, some of us jump, some of us dance, whatever it is, it's the most exciting, beautiful day. We walk a really short, lighthearted walk around a gorgeous Aquinas College with what are some of the key things, guys? Shout it out. Duck Pond. Yeah, duck Pond, gorgeous. Come on, come on, you can do it. Snacks. Snacks. Bagpipers, prizes, D yeah, um, fun, or um, what's the, uh, what was photos, yes, so many wonderful things. And this year, guys, last year we blew it out of the park. We really um, came through and did a fantastic job with the fun, with seeing so many of you there. We had so many more than we'd had. We want so many more to come. So we've challenged all the students and I challenge all of you and I want you to really listen to me. I want you to find your two closest friends and I want you to beg them to come with you. No, I want you to tell them how incredible it is because what we're trying to do even more so, right? We don't want to share all this joy just to ourselves. Everybody deserves to bounce in the clouds. And will you just tell us why the community should participate in this and why it's so important? Sure. Let me just start off by saying I, I have been a special education teacher and a special education administrator all of my professional career. And Northrop Academy is near and dear to my heart. And just like I know it's near and dear to all of you, the students here. And many, at some point in time, I have worked with each one of these uh, uh, individuals. Teacher and I, uh, That's right, that's right. And so it is, the, the big walk is an opportunity for the, our family and friends of uh, Northrop Academy to come out and to support us and show us that you are, uh, and, and, and you are part of this, this event, okay? And like Mr. Moore had said that we have not increased tuition for 25 years. And this is a big fundraiser for us so that, you coming out supporting us will be a big yay and a big okay for the, the students of Northwood Academy. Okay? Woo! Yay! Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, so what about these t-shirts? I mean, come on, everybody, all the students that get to come get one of these gorgeous t-shirts, right? So beautiful. And we would love, Juliet, to give you your very first. We are wearing num shirt number one, shirt number two, oh. and now you've got shirt number three. Yay! I am so honored, and boy, these are nice shirts, too. They're so soft and cozy. So everybody, if you can, get your two best friends and tell them they have to come out with you on May 10th. There's a walk table that you can visit after tonight's program, and you can see a DVD of last year's fun. How fun was it, everybody? That was fun. <laughs> so you can pick up a brochure and a team sign, and be sure to like us on Facebook, and the web address is in your program, so you can learn more about that. And let's make this one the best walk ever. Thanks, ladies. I have a feeling this next part of the program is one that all of you students have been waiting for. Do you know what it is? It's the awards portion of the program, and Sandy's going to take us through this exciting part of the celebration. 
I got a handheld mic now. Um, I would like to invite um, Dr. Ender to come up and uh, Dr. John Cowles to come up, um, who are going to help me pass out your uh, certificates. Yes, these are your, your continuing education units. Um, and this is a surprise. Kate, can you come up too? <laughs> Little change of plans. And Juliet, we're going to have a whole row here of people. Um, I, I, I told the students that they were going to get a special present, and so I'm going to show it off. This is a tote bag, a new tote bag to celebrate our 25th anniversary. And it's very nice and lovely. So I invited Kate up here because I would like for you, if you could um, hand out the tote bags at the very end of the row, that'd be great. Okay, so um, everybody's done a fabulous job this year. This is um, certificate time. So as I call your name, if you could come up and get your certificate from me and then make your way down the row and shake hands or give hugs or whatever it is you feel like doing, okay? Okay. All right, are we ready? Let's get started with, let's get started with LaShawn Aldridge. Good job, LaShawn. Next we have Katie Aubert. No, you can't cry. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. This is my aunt. Congratulations. No, my first year without my aunt. It's been a it's been a difficult year for some of our Northwick students. So yeah, yes. All right, good job, Katie. Is Elizabeth Bajima here? I don't. Okay, Fred Beam is next. Becky Bieber here. I didn't see her. I don't want to miss anybody. John Ball. Gabrielle Bremer. Glenn Corning. <laughs> Sandy Corning. <laughs> Katie Crouch. All right, next we have Aaron Dice. Is Autumn here? I can't, uh, no, Autumn. James Dykstra.
next we have Craig Edelstein. Melinda Frank. <laughs> you guys are old pals, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Alan Greer. Abel Guillermo. Can I get a handshake? <laughs> Tannis Hooker. Good job, Tannis. Yeah, it's like a reception line here. Amy Hyde. Jeremy James. Good job, Jeremy. <laughs> Rebecca Joseph. Yvonne Johnson. Good job, Yvonne. Kim Christakos. Janice Krugler. <laughs> Kathy Ling. <laughs> Next, we have Betty Melmiga. Congratulations, Betty. Congratulations. How did I do my books? That one? Okay, just Gabe McDonald. We have Paige Murphy. Congratulations, Paige. Okay. Oh. 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 Josh Powers.
Julie Price. Is Simberly here? Simberly Reed? No. Jenny Short. The next is Dylan Skalenica. All right, I'm just going to do a little run in. Elizabeth Slagter. Next, we have Leatrice Souza. <laughs> Next is Andy Strauss. Next, we have Sue Udell. <laughs> Next is Molly Vandewater. David Wolven, come on up. Denise Zalsman. Next, we have Mark Saskowitz. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Adam Zimdar. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. Really wonderful work this year. And thank you to all of the special helpers um, tonight. That was wonderful. All right. And now I'd like to invite um, Dr. Greg Osman to come up. Um, this is a special um, some special awards that we have for, um, these are what we call our lifelong learner medallions. And these are uh, awards that we give to students based on longevity. So we have a five-year award, a 10-year award, 15, and a 20. And we do have a few of each of these awards to give tonight. don't currently have a 25-year award, but we do have 5, 10, 15, and 20. <laughs> All right, so um, receive, here's what I'd like to do. Um, I'm going to have, um, the f I'm going to call up 
the award recipients, um, and um, Dr. Osmond will put the award around your neck. Stand for a second. Maybe I'll invite, uh, actually, if there's more than one of you, we'll, we'll stand as a group. If anyone wants to get a quick picture, we can do that, okay? So um, for our five, we have two individuals receiving their five-year Lifelong Learner Awards, um, and the first is Josh Powers. Yellow is five. Congratulations, Josh. These are the students that started when I started. So, yeah. Just hang out right here for a second. Um, the next one doesn't know she's getting this award, but this is for LaShawn Aldridge. All right, congratulations, you guys. Wonderful work, thank you. You're good. Unless you want to get a picture. Get a picture. Yeah, quick picture. All right, um, we have two 10-year award recipients. Actually, only one of them is here tonight. Um, and that goes to Gabriel McDonald. I'm sorry, I should have put this. Yay, congratulations, Gabe. All right, we have two 15-year award or medallions, lifelong learner awards. And um, the first goes to Adam Zimdar. You want to hang out right there for a second, Adam. Just stand right next to, just face the audience, maybe. Thank you. All right, the, the next one goes to Andy Strauss. No, the, hand, the more handsome one. There you go. There you go. Good job. 15 years. We do have one um, student who has been with us for 20 years. I believe it's like 20 and a half years. Um, and I'm not sure she knows that she's getting this award tonight. It is the pretty purple one. And this goes to Betty Nalmaiga. 20 years. Uh, 20 years for Betty. 24, no, 20 years. That's a long time. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. That was, that's a, quite an accomplishment for those students. All right. Um, this, uh, we have a, a quick treat for, for you all. If you've been around at all, you know, normally we have, shh, normally we have a poetry book that we have on your, your chairs. And one of the highlights of the evening is students reading poetry. We knew that the schedule tonight was going to be really, really packed. And we also, um, during the fall semester, when we spent our time at the community media center, we really expressed ourselves that way. So we didn't um, focus um, a lot of attention on writing poetry, but we know that you, you love to hear the students. So we did come up with a poem that the students are going to do together individually. Um, it might be a little tricky, um, but so this is um, a poem that will tell you a little bit about them individually and 
we're going to start, and I'm thinking what we'll do, we're just going to do, we're just going to have everyone, let me, before I, say, before I do this, I just want to make sure that all of the students are sitting up in these first few rows, right? There's no students sitting out there anywhere, because otherwise, I don't want to miss anybody, because this is important. Okay, so what I would like for you to do is to stand up and face your friends and family, okay? Okay. Well, it might be hard for you to see a few folks, but oh, I'll start on this side. This, um, this poem is called, I Am. I am loving and caring, happy, brave and strong, hard worker, aware uh, Grateful. Secretly hopeful. Awesome and funny. <laughs> Good friends. Friendly child of God. Gentle and kind. I am wise. Nurturing. Organized. A good bowler. <laughs> I am the angel. Wonderful listener. Powerful. Hard worker. Compassionate. <laughs> Sweet and good. <laughs> Good worker. Uh, I am a dancer. A firework. I am a daydreamer. Lifelong learner. A good cross stitcher. Good cook. Uh, I am talent. I am. That's your family. I know it. I am warm like the sun. I'm dramatic. Like a flower. Amazing Amy. <laughs> Amazing Amy. Good job. <laughs> Musical and determined. I am creative. Fun and helpful. I am loving to my mother. Together, Together we, we are, are North Oak Academy. Academy. gentlemen, this year's students of North Oak Academy, once again. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you. This wraps up our celebration part, but we're still going to have some fun. Uh, we, want to know that, we want you to know that those of you who parked in the ramp, you need to have your parking ticket and your voucher to get out. So if you turn in your parking ticket when you got here, there it is right there. You need both of those in order to exit the parking ramp tonight. So make sure you have the ticket and your voucher to get out. We are so thankful to every one of you in this room for your inspiration and your hard work and your support. And so have a good evening, everybody.